Hello, welcome to another episode of New Gameplay Today. I'm your host, Alex Van Aken. Thank you for tuning in to Game Informer. Uh, today, I am joined by Marcus Stewart. How you doing, Marcus? I am doing great, Mr. Van Aken. How are you? I am doing very well because we are joined by the creative director at Flight School, the creator of Stonefly, Adam Volker. How you doing? <laughs> I'm sleepy. Y'all are so full of energy. This is this is all fake, Adam. All right, I am like, <laughs> I am really struggling too. I haven't had my coffee, but you know, we're playing a cool game, a cool game that you worked on. That's true. Those are true things. <laughs> well, you you want to tell us, you know, start off and tell us a little bit about Stonefly. Of course. Um, so Stonefly is Flight School's most recent video game title. It's an action adventure game set in a a miniature world where you play as Annika Stonefly, the namesake of the title, who is an inventor and a pilot um, on a quest to recover a lost family heirloom, which you are uh, actually piloting right now. Yes. Talk about, like, I've got, like, a couple of family heirlooms, and they're, like, you know, it's like, oh, this is the, <laughs> the journal from your grandpa's, you know, when he was at war. Uh, Annika's got a, a whole a whole ass mech. So. It's a little different, yeah. <laughs> yes, Pretty cool heirloom. Really different. Um, we like to, to goof about it as uh, Cameron's dad's car from Ferris Bueller. Oh, that's um, funny. Mm. When we were putting the story together and stuff, that's kind of the uh, metaphor we use. Uh, but yes, her her dad and Annika are both uh, brilliant mechanics, uh, mech rig pilot mechanics. And her dad, this rig is something he's been tinkering on for years and years and years and he's a bit of like um like imagine the blacksmith who forged excalibur that's who gerald stonefly is oh dang <laughs> so that's, that's what you're whistling right now yeah. that's what he's been yeah. doing this whole time yeah he's been <laughs> so i have a i have a question adam and i like i don't know if this is a spoiler or not i don't think so but like just looking around we're fighting these giant bugs and we're kind of traveling on these Seemingly oversized trees. Is this like a little person in a big world kind of a thing, which I'm totally into, or is it? Are these regular people and everything is just super huge? Oh my gosh, that is a question that we've avoided answering um, because <laughs> <laughs> I think um, <laughs> it's a very good question. Um, I like to think of them as small people, but we don't have humans in our world. Stonefly is like I think we would run into jaguars and bears before we would run into like normal-sized people. But I do think the world is normal and the people are small. Like, uh, it's just kind of, I've always thought of it as some sort of alien planet or some sort of, like, uh, I don't know. That's right. <laughs> you don't have <laughs> regular forest tiny people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I'm about uh, two and a half hours into this. And yeah, oh, I, have cool. run, I have run into other, like, characters that are definitely, would not qualify as human in the traditional sense. So <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah, I think that's probably even a better way to explain it. Like we've got bug characters and we, you know, you meet um, like other creatures of the forest that in our world would be small. And so if the people are that size, then they must be small people. That's I think this, I've, I've arrived at probably the answer I will continue to give to that question fr from this point on. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one though. That's a good so one. do you want to kind of explain what we're doing here, Adam? You know, we, we have, Kind of skip the intro, intro of the game where you're introduced to Annika and her father. Uh, For sure. And we are out collecting, you know, resources now. Limodot? Is that how you say it? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, so uh, the game is built to keep players in the air. So this whole tutorial that you're playing now is trying to encourage you to, like, do your strategizing in combat and your platforming like while airborne. And so our jump button even is sort of like what I would call like an inverse jump. Like if you hold it down, you land, but if you tap it, you kind of bounce. Yeah, like that. Yeah. And so um, everything about the game is encouraging players to sort of be up in the sky. We figured that like, um, if these tiny people were trying to get around a forest, like it, I don't know when the last time you laid down in the grass in an open field, but like there's a lot of stuff down there. There and, is. And so, <laughs> and so walking, uh, you know, like bugs do, uh, you know, you could traverse the world that way, but we figured they'd probably come up with this smarter solution. Um, and so, yes, you're in the air. Um, most missions are linear. There are there are patrols which are um, which allow players to like do a lot of exploration and find stuff and 
get into random encounters and fights with bugs, but it is all in the service of looking for various minerals and rare items in the world to upgrade your rig and um, continue Annika's adventure. That's kind of what you've been doing right there, Alex. Uh, yeah. People haven't noticed. You're kind of sucking up. When you see those little lines coming out of your mech, you're just kind of sucking up the resources around. And like the I combat is... Die. Yeah, you're right. doing a pretty good job of that so far. Um, and then the combat is uh, kind of knocking off these bugs from the ledges, which is a, a pretty nice, like, I guess, non-violent way. Well, I guess I don't know why we don't know where they end up. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're probably fine, <laughs> but I mean, like, like not like overly uh, gory or like. Oh no! This or oh, Alex. Listen, oh, you're fine. you you jinx me, Marcus. Okay, <laughs> that's on you, buddy. No problem. But yeah, I, that was interesting when you were describing the flight controls, Adam. Because I had the same. It took me a little while to get used to it when I was first playing. The kind of inverse, like, oh, okay, I, I drop if I jump. Um, but I kind of like the feel of the bounce too. Like it's almost like, it's like using a bouncy ball almost right. <laughs> right and i was just spamming that and then also with this particular ship like the way it expands is it's really satisfying kind of reminds me of those um i don't know what you call them those like weird little ball toys that like expand into the giant like i know i know exactly what you're talking grid. about i don't know what they're called but <laughs> it's like, i definitely you know the yeah like those it. connect things that yeah like, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what just called. like i got that same sense of sat satisfaction of opening up one of those jumping That's around fine. with this it's cool that you call the combat out too because the nonviolent part of it was really important for us um and so like how are we going to solve that was a a big part of early development prototyping um, and then Bo was talking uh, a lot about Smash Brothers, and he was like, I just love pushing players off the edge, right? Like, um, instead of literally, like, putting a bullet in them and watching them die, you <laughs> it's like a much, a much more chill, much more um, sort of friendly, com competitive way that Smash yeah, plays. Yeah, yeah. Um, or even, even, like, I was going to call them games, but it's not the right word. Even uh, sports like sumo wrestling where the object is to uh, push your opponent out of a ring, right? So we were like, well, we're on branches and it seems to fit with our world and we don't want to kill and squish these bugs anyway. So let's just shush them off the sides. So let's just no, shoot them, shoot them like off that. the edge of the, of the map. Yeah. If you're a fan of the, the fan from Smash Brothers and annoying your friends with that, you'll love this. There you go. <laughs> That's exactly it. Actually, Bo is a chic main and he, um, like, there's an ability Alex, if you just like use your wind ability, like tap it, you'll do instead of holding it down like that, just tap it really quick. And he would that was like the way he plays Sheik is to slow like slowly walk a player off the edge. <laughs> and so he designed that particular wind ability to be very similar to that. That's very good. <laughs> yeah. And so we are kind of riding these wind streams up further through the environment. Oh, let's let's get this. And I the nice I, I like that I can see this little it's kind of like the Mario shadow, like the little, uh, you can see where you're going to land, this little white dot. Uh, oh, yeah, super important. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I like the way it bends, too, like when you're about to land on because you land on a lot of branches and, like, not a lot of, like, flat surfaces half the time, and I like the way it kind of bends to give you an exact idea of the angle that you're going to land on this branch. Yeah, it was a um, sort of a debug thing we added, and then we kept because it just became so integral into um, being able to just traverse the environment. Um, the camera wasn't doing us any favors as far as like those organic places and making sure like you could land where you wanted to land. So mm -hmm. yeah, that dot and then that line became something really important to platforming. And so Adam, I, I know we aren't seeing it right now, but you can customize your mech, right? And, and kind of absolutely new parts yeah. and all of that. Can you kind of talk right. about that process and what it's like? For sure. So there are um, cosmetic upgrades and then functional upgrades that Anne comes up with. So, so you might see her, based on how you play, sort of have these thoughts. Like she thinks aloud a lot and comes up with all of those things her, on her own because she's an inventor. So the cosmetic upgrades are hidden throughout the uh, world. Uh, once you find them, you can craft them. Um, okay. And in camp, and then you can change the colors on this. That's one of our favorite things. It's like you, there's like sliders for uh, the shader, and you can put any colors you want. Then we give you uh, 
like a color hex code that you can share with your friends or put your friends' colors in there as well. Um, oh, that's really and then, cool. Yeah, it's tons of fun. And then um, there's a combination of mechanical upgrades as well. So some ability stuff that um, that will change the way uh, combat works. Uh, protective bubbles, sticky substances to stop bugs, uh, wind gusts to blow them up in the air, all sorts of fun fun stuff. And then there are sort of like stat-based upgrades, like hull strength or jump height or uh, how far the wind will push bugs and that sort of thing as well. Yeah. I wish so, you guys could see my mech. It looks real cool. It's got oh, a bunch yeah. of bright. <laughs> it's got a bunch of bright primary colors. Like Hell it looks yeah. like a, a Fisher Price plaything. Hell yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> this is rad. Well, we'll see a little bit. We'll we'll kind of check out what's coming up next. But we'll start to wind down. I don't want to you know give away too much of the game. But we can see. Are we arriving in town now? We're coming back home. From We're coming back ride. home. Oh, and there's this no. creeper, and he, and kind of like, who's that? That was weird. Almost killed somebody. Almost killed somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is this is home base. This is oh, no. the Woodruff Stonefly shop. Yeah. But she doesn't shut the door to the shed. Annika, no. Classic mistake. Classic. Who's this? Oh. Oh no, it's the same guy. <laughs> I mean, usually when someone almost hits me with their car, I usually retaliate by trying to take it. <laughs> eye for an eye. Right? And so, um, I mean, we're, we're seeing here, story's a big focus uh, in the game. Can you kind of absolutely. talk about like, you know, you've talked about like all these interesting mechanics and like even just like in the early the early minutes, you know? the combat's really, really neat and engaging. How do you kind of balance that with like a, a story? Yeah, so um, yeah, like you said, story was something we really wanted to tackle on Stonefly. Coming out of Creature, we felt like it was something that we really wanted to put more of an emphasis on. And um, designing different ways for it to, to be in the game was, mm -hmm. uh, was really a fun challenge. Um, we thought of Annika as, like I said, an inventor who's kind of in her own head a lot. And so those dreams are places where like, we get an insight into what she's currently thinking, the same way that you, like a human processes like things while they're sleeping. Annika does the same thing. We, we, we tried to figure out like um, how many cutscenes we were gonna do, uh, where they were gonna go. The front of the game has a lot of really beautiful animation. Um, Unreal, like we dug, we dug into the Unreal tools to really uh, use the sequencer stuff in a way we hadn't in Creature. Mm. So, um, yeah, it was like I, I really hope that players love going on Annika's journey and meeting all the characters and stuff because we've we've kind of peppered in story in different ways. Kind of um, through in camp, you can talk to the Acorn Core when you're out exploring. Annika will talk to herself. You can there's lore in the item descriptions because we're all big Dark Souls fans. Oh yeah, and, you know. So we're we're trying to put it in all these different places. You can you can go in camp and into your tent and rest at any point, and there's there's a bunch of dreams for players to uh, experience and stuff like that. That's awesome. Well, we'll kind of start wrapping up here. Adam, can you kind of tell everybody where they can play Stonefly? And uh, it's out now, right? If you're watching this video, out. you can play it. You, if you're seeing this, then you can go click that purchase button um, anywhere you play games. So, oh wow, uh, yeah, current gen or what are we calling it? Next gen still? I don't know. Next on PlayStation, gen, Xbox, gen. Next yeah, gen. Uh, it's on Switch, uh, it's on EGS as well as Steam. So whether you play on PC or console, you can find the game. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for watching this episode of New Gameplay today. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like subscribe to the Game Informer YouTube channel and head over to GameInformer.com. Oh, look at this. Okay. I, we shouldn't end the video because look how cool this is. Yeah, you get there, right? like a, cricket. a little chubby cricket. What a way to go out. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.